Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, in fact, because we are returning to a Let's Play of Democracy 4, where we're playing as ultra-religious ultra France. So, um, as you'll notice, I've changed to a dark color scheme over here, um, as some of you requested, so I'm not entirely sure I super like it, but we'll run with it, I'll give it a go, and then we're going to see whether that is uh, going to be better, but do let me know what you guys think, so, yeah. Nevertheless, let's do dive into the game. Uh, last time we did uh, start our term over here, I think for about a year or so, and we have introduced a couple of interesting measures. So we've um, forbidden sex work, uh, we have pretty much forbidden alcohol more or less completely uh, this turn actually, and liberals are going to hate that, but also alcohol consumption is going to go down. And that's nice because that is only leading to amoral behaviour and we want to put a stop to that basically, so yeah. We are definitely, most certainly, going to change that. Now, I noticed that we are pretty much in reach of a very interesting policy. And that is, if we're looking at our political capital, you can see that we can save up to 36 political capital. And I would very much like to make church attendance compulsory. It's just, I, <laughs> sorry, but this is just, it's its kind of fun. Uh, we would need 36 political power to do that, but it would have the benefit of driving up religious membership immensely. Now that does mean that we need to save up for that two full turns because we are earning 18 per turn and yeah, well, it just doesn't add up otherwise. So that on the other hand means that in probably two turns we can do that and we've got pretty much 14 political power to spend now. There are a lot of things that we could do. Um, and I think at some point we'll want to rearrange our ministers. But maybe not quite. Um, and just to show you a little bit of our kerfuffle that we're in. These are our starting ministers. And you can see some of these guys will not be particularly happy. Because motorists, I tend to to, to set, really upset the motorist in any of my let's plays. So anyone with a motorist trait here is probably not going to do too well. Uh, and that does leave you here with a religious trait. You, sir, have a religious trait. Everyone else sort of doesn't. All of our potential uh, ministers here do not have these traits. The best that we can do are a couple of conservatives over here. That's very nice, like Olivia Blanc. She's pretty nice. But even there, there's not that many. Capitalists retired? It's difficult to find people who are actually uniquely qualified and aligned with our values over here. Some conservatives, yes. But that does mean that we need to decide either probably on socialists and poor people and farmers, people like that, Melvin over here. I think Melvin is in fact one of the few guys who could actually go for a transport job because in transport, pretty much none of our available ministers who would be interested in a transport job are just really aligned with us. So this is going to be difficult and that does mean we will need to keep an eye on the socialists. And we cannot upset the socialists too much. Luckily, they are quite happy for now, but we still face an economic crisis over here. And we will need to tackle that and that we will need to tackle with um, some capitalist measures. Now, we have done so already, and I do hope that our corporate exodus here, at least, is going to go away in a couple of turns. And that's going to be very nice, because that alone might uh, pluck our uh, budget deficit over here. But, not quite. So, let's see what we're going to do with that. And one of the key issues is still that, all in all, our economy is still grossly uncompetitive. That's due to large extent due to corporation tax. I don't really want to decrease that. Uh, but also, to a large extent, because productivity is not high enough. If it was higher, this would had a n larger negative effect, and therefore this would drop. Now, productivity in turn is driven by a lot of factors, as you can see. And probably alcohol consumption here is going to be tackled, so that's nice. That is going to bring that up, but not nearly enough. So, I think we actually have to think about education, industrial automation, and technology. Technology in particular has the potential to boost that immensely, as does uh, industrial automation. And these are, in, in fact, uh, dependent on one another. You can see industrial automation in turn does depend on technology. So what does feed into technology then? All of these things, stem cell research is very nice, uh, but religious people dislike it. So ultimately, this is something that I will have 
pretty much to disband. But, and here's an interesting thing, we could do a new t uh, technologies, uh, sorry, new new policies here, like, I don't think techologies, that would actually be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, technology would go up, education and state employees would be happy, so that's not a bad one to watch out for. Uh, but, is it under welfare then? No, I don't, I, th I think I saw it somewhere over here. Law and order? No, it can't be under law and order. Tax? No economy then? Yeah, tech grants. So we could do tech grants. Um, the issue with that is it would br bring up technology. It would also increase productivity, and that's fine. But religious membership would drop. And that's just not going to work for us. So we cannot allow religious membership to drop. And interestingly enough, if we do look at science funding over here, this does not have any immediate effect on religious membership. Religious membership is influenced by one thing, though, and that does open up a very interesting uh, played style that we could go for, and that is if we look at the membership over here, it's largely driven actually by the Human Development Index. So if that goes very high, religious membership is going to drop. But if it goes very low, so if the Human Development Index would not be great, actually a lot of people would become religious. And that is, I think, extremely interesting to see. So that does depend on education, health and rages. So ultimately, we want to keep these things at least not terribly high. Maybe okay-ish high, but not terribly so. So let's try to not get these things too high. So I don't think we want to go for education, but science funding, this seems to be fine. I don't know why I would expect that to bring down religious membership, but in game it doesn't. So you know what? We're going to increase that by a lot. It's only seven political cap power to do that. It's going to drive up technology, energy efficiency, which is nice, but not really crucial. GDP, which is very lovely, but it does take a while to kick in. State employees are going to like it. Yeah, that's nice. Unemployment is going to come down, but really the big effects here are on technology and GDP. So we're going to apply that. It does cost seven political power. It does increase our deficit, but you know what? I think it is worth it. Let's uh, do spend the remaining political cap capital here on a carpooling campaign because it is just very useful to bring down car usage. It's just more or less universally bad in this game. So yeah, let's do take that. Uh, do we do want to do anything else over here? I don't think any specific measure here is incredibly important to us. By the way, how much are you going to earn? Not much. You're not really going to earn much. Poor people also hate it. Um, and some of the people that we're looking at do uh, indeed represent poor people. So, no, that's pretty much a no. This would increase liberalism. That's a no for sure. Uh, but I do think environmentalists are pretty happy and their membership um, is pretty nice. So if we can make them happy and the environment better and uh, get more of these very, very happy environmentalists, I think that's going to go uh, quite well for us. So... Without further ado, let's see what we've got over here. Ooh, a plane crash. That's never good. Um, we got some headlines. That's not really important. Good news. Economy is doing well. But notice that the global economy here is already starting to uh, get into a downturn. So that's not very good. On the other hand, our deficit here is tiny for now. And I would hope that we can bring it down a little bit further because also debt interest here is still a very big issue. Right, we are still earning 18 political power, so let's spend at the most 3 political power. That's not a lot, um, and we can't really in, in, do any, let's say, spectacular uh, uh, religious campaign on that basis. Uh, but let's see what we could do. Tourism ad campaign, yeah, it's kind of nice, but really not that important. Tobacco awareness, yeah, Pff, it's it's okay, but really, is it is it that crucial? I don't think we want socialism to go down. Recycling would be very lovely indeed, but again, international trade is very useful, but on the other hand, you know what, let's go for it. Um, let's do implement that, and I think that's fine. That is slightly inefficient in that we have one political power kicking around. I think we could potentially increase bicycle subsidies slightly, and that might not be the worst idea. Uh, but it's not also going to be the best idea either, so... Let's increase that somewhat to over here, and I think that's fine. It's going to increase health a little bit and, and do some things. But yeah, let's go for the next turn right away over here. And for the first time, we do see that corporate exodus is going away, and that should boost our um, GDP quite a lot. And the 
unemployment should come down, so that's all very good. There are going to be some rebound effects uh, due to the way that the economy works. So, um, in particular, there should be the wages setting over here. And you can see that the wages um, are going to go uh, up as economy as as unemployment comes down and as the wages go up our productivity will go down and that does mean that we're gonna get less GDP so there are some sort of these circular effects uh, but still very nice to see housing expansion do we want to relax the planning law or keep strict uh, relax uh, restrictions now on this one I don't think there's any religious uh, way to do that so I'm going to relax that. I It's simply something that I like to do personally uh, because I think people do deserve uh, housing. Right, uh, let's look at the budget over here. Yeah, the economy is starting to come down further and our deficit is still kind of high. But I do think as our GDP is jumping up, that should come potentially down and hopefully going to go away next turn. But enough being said, we have 36 political power and that does mean that we are going to go and declare church attendance compulsory. I think this is one of the biggest things that I've ever done in Democracy 4. Religious people are going to love it, liberals are going to hate it, as do ethnic minorities, but religious membership is going to go up over a very long time. Uh, but that's sort of the um, way that the game works, and I do like to see that. This is incredibly interesting. I do not know what's going to happen over here, but it's certainly very, very interesting to see that. Right, not much effect on the economy over here, respiratory diseases, yeah, just car usage is probably still, it's very, very difficult to beat that and down, but we will need to try to do that. Doctor Strike is starting to look a little bit better, but really not that much yet. We would, the thing about the Doctor Strike is, so you can see all of these effects over here, right? And basically, either private healthcare has the effect to drastically reduce the Doctor Strike. If there's enough private healthcare, at very low level it doesn't do much, but at very high levels, uh, this would go down. This would basically get rid of the doctor strike if there's a very big health industry on a private level. The same is true for state level. So if it's very high, um, the effect on this would be very large, and we would get rid of the doctor strike. Lovely, but state health services do drive out private healthcare. Which is kind of logical, as uh, the state does provide healthcare, it's sort of less profitable uh, for companies to do that. At the moment, we are sort of in the middle of these two things. We have some state health service that's sort of in the middle, maybe leaning slightly towards the higher end. That's enough to drive down health, uh, private healthcare by a lot, but it's not enough to change the doctor strike because this is non linear. You need either of these factors to be very large to really get rid of the doctor's strike. And the doctor's strike is very, very uh, detrimental here because parents hate it. And as we've seen, a lot of people tend to be parents. So I would guess, let's, let's see how many people are parents actually. So yeah, it's about 28% of the population. Let's call it 25 so that we're a little bit more conservative. So that basically means um, this minus 20% modifier on opinion on 25% of the population does translate to, let's call that 5.5 or something, um, negative effect on everyone. So this is a pretty big, big effect. It's also driving down health, which does um, increase, I think, healthcare demand. Yeah. So as health gets lower, that does increase the healthcare demand. And that, in turn, does lead to health, uh, hospital overcrowding. And guess what? Parents really, really hate uh, <laughs> overcrowding. So that's another minus 10% there. And retired people do hate that too. So, yeah, this is not going great. Nevertheless, uh, we don't have any political power, so let's see what's going to happen over here. And we've got a message over here from someone. Well, that's interesting. You would want a clean fuel subsidy. Uh, we are also facing an issue here with pollution. Which is interesting because population is driving that down, which is interesting. But the environment is, well, not doing enough to help it really. But as GDP is becoming better, this is starting to, to look concerning. So we will need to look at that. Unfortunately, we can't do really much about car usage. And that's quite, quite difficult to influence the environment as we've seen, I think, many times. Right, how's our budget looking? 
we are actually running a surplus here for the first time, even though the global economy is coming down. So that's very, very lovely. And that is extremely important for us because as we are starting to pay back uh, some money, we will be getting a better rating and that will means we will spend less on debt. And that is actually fairly lovely. Um, it's not sure whether that is going to be stable, but I do think uh, we might just be fine over here. How's our popularity looking? Yeah, it's coming down slightly because um, a lot of the specifically ethnic minorities here have a huge issue here with the church attendance, uh, which I kind of guess uh, get. So, yeah, what's actually driving your membership? Pretty much only immigration, right? So we should probably think about increasing our border patrol, uh, border controls over here so that we are reducing immigration. Patriots will love it, but ethnic minorities will dislike it, but it's also going to bring down their membership over time. Um, uh, they are really going to hate us over time. So, yeah, I think this might be one of the things that we probably want to increase. 21 political power, quite quite expensive, actually. Uh, now, let's, let's do see what else does influence immigration. Yeah, a lot of these things that we can't directly influence, but citizenship tasks we potentially could. Um, which also reduce racial tensions, which is pretty nice to see. Liberals dislike it, ethnic minorities, but not nearly as much. So, honestly, let's do this because it is going to drive that down slightly. Um, and I do think it's going to be important to stabilize this um, somewhat over time. How's productivity looking? Well, on competitive economies doing mm, well. Yeah, I would really hope that science funding does more over time. But technology should be starting to tick up, but it's going to be a long, long route here for that to become really, really relevant. How about IP rights? Yeah, we could increase that by spending a little bit there. Interestingly, the poor dislike it, young people dislike it, socialism would go down. That's not really important, though. Technology and some of these things here would go up. That's interesting. Let's consider that, but it's very small. We also do have a dilemma over here. There are there are calls for a law to expressively set quotas for the employment of ethnic and other minorities. No, no, we are not going to do that. Conservatives will like that. But yeah, I think we're soon going to have an issue here uh, with ethnic minorities. And as you can see, we're also starting to face an issue here with some of our ministers being extremely unhappy. And in fact, we have uh, dropped down here to 17%, which really isn't great. Uh, but... Let's see what we can do. Um, we would need 10 political power to reshuffle our cabinets. I do think I want that to do that, but can't do that now. So let's do that next time around. Anything else then that we want to do immediately here? Drug treatment. Yeah, that's all kind of nice, but really not that important. Of these measures here are good, but I'm still slightly worried about the GDP and the entire economy, which I don't want to come crashing down on me. Yeah, and we did see that there was a bit of an issue with the environment. So actually what we might want to do here is increase the pollution controls because that has one of the largest effects here uh, on the environment. It's still not very big though, 8%, and it does decrease CO2 emissions. So maybe let's hold off on that for now. Anything else that we can do then to improve the environment, which admittedly is not in a very good state. Yeah, we are doing some things here, but probably really not enough. Mandatory micro-generation. Well, the nice thing is that would not cost us a lot of money. Capitalists dislike it. The energy industry would pretty much vanish, but honestly, that's not really an issue. And the environment would only be influenced a very tiny bit, so probably no. Pollution controls, clean air. What about the subsidies? That is probably going to be much more expensive. But it also might have a large effect here. That's a nice 10 percentage point. Oil demand, CO2 emissions. This is kind of good. And that is actually increasing uh, the... You know what? Let's do that. I know it's expensive, 1.2 billion. Uh, but it's very cheap in terms of political power. So, yeah, I think that's going to be all right. Smart meters. Um, not directly influencing the economy. So, that's a no Welfare, do we have recycling? I think recycling might be a little bit too expensive. Yeah, it is. Right, we could go for reforestation, at least to get rid of the respiratory disease. And the environment would like that, and it's 
Gonna cost a little bit, but not really too much, so yeah, let's go for that. All of these things do take some time to come into effect, but we do need a good environment to to be um, to to go well over here. Right, GDP do, going still very strong. Our credit rating has in fact been upgraded, so that's very very nice to see. Ooh, and obesity is gonna come into effect. There's no way around that, and this is already triggered, so we will know it's there next time. That's that's pretty bad. Um, here is a mining accident, which is definitely not helping our uh, happiness. So, yeah, let's see. Poles. Oh, yeah, we are starting to come down here. Uh, turns out it's not a very, very popular policy that we're doing here. Um, and ethnic minorities dislike that a lot. Yeah. Actually, I do think we need to tackle immigration more. Otherwise, these people will hate the guts of us. So... I think we have influenced the citizenship already. Now that does already has had all the fact that it will ever have on immigration. So that's a bit of an issue and as GDP here is increasing that will only start to become more of an issue. So yeah that's pretty much a no then. So not much that we can do. I guess we could build a border wall <laughs> and Jesus, I'm, I'm already driving towards the, the worst kind of policies that I can think of. Right, um, anyway, let's think about border controls then. So, yeah, immigration here would fall. Ethnic minorities would dislike it. But I do think we need to, to tackle that. Why can't I not increase that? Oh, it's 11. That's a weird weird error here. Yeah, but let's let's do that. Stricter border controls. That's going to bring down tourism too, uh, which in turn is going to decrease the GDP. But eh, we can't we can't do everything. So yeah, I guess I guess that's going to be all right. By the way, how is alcohol consumption looking? So isn't that over here? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's dropping down very quickly, and that should mean that productivity is actually coming up. Yeah, slightly. Ever so slightly, I should say. Productivity will probably remain a very big issue here, so hmm. something to keep in mind. Okay, anything else that we can do then for the environment? No, pretty much. N well, we could do some healthy food campaign. Cycling is also kind of nice, but how about increasing the junk food tax here? Well, we know it's going to influence the obesity problems, but I do think they have triggered already, so I'd rather sort of... Well, this is very linear. Po poverty, this is all very linear. So you know what? We might, in fact, increase that by as much as we can because all of these effects are relatively small, so yeah, I think I'm going to be all right with that. Good. Okay, so two political power. What can we do with that? Um, we could increase the pollution control slightly, state energy company. We could fund that a little bit better, uh, but really not that much. Labour bank holiday, yeah, that's okay-ish, I guess. What is this? Oh, yeah, the National Business Council. Yeah, that's nice. Small business grants, usually very useful. State telecom company. You're feeding into corruption. Capitalists dislike it. Trade unions do like it. Social, there's no direct effect on effect on socialists over here, and on the other hand, the telecom industry itself does not really do a lot. So, for 15 points, we could cancel this policy, probably uh, bag in quite a bit of money, and that would be nice. We do need to start thinking about our prospect for re-election, though. So that's not really something that we want to do right away okay yeah yeah let's increase bicycle subsidies it's gonna help a little bit not much but every little bit helps over time so that's nice to see yeah obesity is here uh, but I do think it's gonna go away due to the junk food tax Ooh, that's interesting it will probably not go away because that's only seven percent drop over here whereas this does need um, to probably drop down by more than that not a big issue but it's certainly not great 
either. Let's send in the troops to safeguard oil. Liberals hate that. Ethnic minorities are going to be really, really upset in a moment. So, you guys are already feeding into terrorist groups. How's your membership looking, though? Yeah, immigration still increasing. Yeah, but border controls will get rid of that over time. So I think that's going to be all right. Right. Let's look at the happiness over here. So parents, you guys are still influenced by all of these things down there, which I completely understand. Hospital overcrowding and doctor strike is a big, big issue. So I think we do actually have to think about the state health services over here. Now we could get rid of them entirely and sort of expect the private industry to pick up on that. Um, it's not a completely, completely stupid thought. But I do think that, well, this drives up socialist happiness too. And socialists do need some happiness. We could get rid of it entirely. It's, it's incredibly expensive. Now the question is where would the private health service sit? So it's currently sitting at let's say 20%. Well, yeah, I think that's where, where it sits. So without the state health services, it would probably be pretty high actually. It would be at least over here. Some 90% or so. Which is kind of nice and that would reduce the doctor strike. It would help with obesity. Retired people would like it moderately. Health would go up to, what about, 30 percentage points here? And hospital overcrowding would sort of drop away. Now, retired people do like that too. Health would go up by about the same amount. Socialists would not like it, and wealthy and capitalists would dislike it. But the poor, yeah, we will need the poor and we will need the socialists. And you know what? A lot of our people here are incredibly unhappy and we're only gaining 16 political power. So what we're going to do is we're going to reshuffle our cabinet. And we're going to get rid of everyone except for these two. This gentleman over here is uh, has sympathies, state, employees and religious. So he's great. And this guy here has socialists and environmentalists. Socialists do moderately support us. Environmentalists, in fact, do love us. So I think these uh, two people are great over here. But we will need to get rid of some of these. Now, of course, I did look at that in between episodes. And for the foreign policy, I would like Olivia Blanc. I think we have encountered her before. So here. Here we go. Conservatives retired. I think these people should be uh, ultimately very supportive of us. So that's fine. Welfare. I think Edgar here, uh, who's also religious and middle income. So he should like us at least over time. I don't know why he doesn't now. But yeah, and public services, that is going to be Alphonse. Where are you? Alphonse, here we go. Again, socialist state employees, I think we can sort of make these guys happy enough. So let's see whether that does work out. On the law and order side, I would like Marianne. And Marianne has a slight issue because there are two of these. Marianne Lefebvre is poor and commuters. I don't know whether these people are going to be happy. And there's going to be another Marine Lefebvre. I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. Conservatives farmers. These guys should be more supportive of us, but you know what? Right now she is, so let's pick her. And in terms of transport, there's only pretty much one person. Um, no, parents hate us. They absolutely do. They despise us. Motorists will do that for a long while. There's another motorist over there. Uh, so we probably have to go for the poor farmers over here with Melvin. That's all right. And that does lead to more political power here in 19. That's kind of nice. I do think that's that's going to be a lot more, a lot better for us uh, over time here. So that was a big reshuffle. Where do we stand then? Well, how do we look on the on the state health services? Getting rid of that entirely would be would be kind of interesting. We could also just drop it to zero and probably would, would see pretty much all effects being at zero. So I don't think we need to necessarily try to cancel that. We could actually try to save up for the 21 political power here. 
um, and it would free up a lot of money. And frankly, at the current level of GDP here, I think we are fine with a private health care service. On the other hand, the poor, the socialists, we could try to increase that. And it's probably going to be enough to... No, that's definitely not going to be enough to get rid of any of these problems. So we might need to think about that in a longer term setting. Now, conservatives and... Well, we are starting to see some issues here. No, not quite. But our security effectiveness is not very great. Um, and the state employees do, I think, now influence at least a couple of our ministers. So... It would be nice to keep these guys happy, and of course the Conservatives. How about the religious? Do you actually like us? I mean, we did introduce mandatory church services, so... You're slightly supportive. Honestly, I did expect a little bit more of you. Yeah, well, that's true. We still have an issue here, in the sense that we still have gay marriage around, and that is something that we will need to cancel. Which is such a, such a shame. I mean, it's, honestly, this is one of the one of the toughest Let's Plays of that time that I'm doing over here. Um, nevertheless, okay, what do we want to do? I don't think we want to do much with six political powers. So I think we're going to save that up and see what we can invest that to. There are a couple of big sweeping changes that we do need to make. Like, for example, looking at gay marriage. And in particular... Uh, looking at the secularity of education, which is sort of a fish symbol somewhere over here. Which I can't see, which probably you guys have spotted already and sort of yelled at me. There we go. Right, so if we decrease that here to pretty much none, that would cost us 36 political capital. That's quite a bit. Uh, but we are, we can save that up. Yeah, I do think we can. It hasn't registered this change here uh, of our ministers here. So... I think that should be pretty okay. I do wonder why you hate us so much. Middle income and religious. Yeah, well, middle income doesn't really like us, do you? Yeah, you actually do count us unhappy. Why, though? Well, the income tax? Yeah, pretty much only the income tax. And the income tax does have some negative repercussions here. Okay, I think we need to think a little bit about what we can do for the middle income um, segment over here. Just to ensure that our power base is doing fine. That being said, I think now is a perfect place to put in a cut. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, not too much, though. Uh, and hope you do enjoy your mandatory church services. Uh, and some of the effects here that we are um, exerting on France. Do leave a like and all of that and do let me know what you think about the dark color scheme here. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye bye.